And welcome back another week. This is season four, episode six. I'm Gaston Rosato. And I'm Renzo Rosato. And this week we're gonna be diving into the first generation Land Rover Range Rover, in this case, a 1974. That's right, an early production 74 known as the Range Rover Classic. Today That's you right. think Range Rover, you think, you know, soccer mom, luxury car. No, this is a, another point intended here. We're talking about two door, four speed V8 early car. But before we move on, please stop what you're doing, hit subscribe, it's right there. We will I really appreciate that. Yes, we will. Let's get take it off of the drive. So far on this channel, we've only covered two other sport utility vehicles, and they've all coincidentally been Land Rovers. Now, this car is a little different because this is the Range Rover. When you talk about 70 Land Rovers, you think like a Series 2 or Series right. 3, a very boxy, you know, safari type looking car. So like you mentioned, this is the first generation Range Rover. And people don't realize it goes back so far. So production of the Range Rover started back in 1970, um, and it continued on till today. It's still going on, and we're at, are at the fourth generation of the Range Rover now. Number one soccer mom car. Number one soccer mom car, yes it is. Now whoever bought this car brand new, bought it with the intention to use it as a utility vehicle. Oh, 100%. This is tow capable, this is four by four, this is stick shift. Yeah, and it wasn't until the second generation where we start seeing more of that luxury getting put into the Range Rover. Because um, we know it today as a luxury sport utility vehicle. This thing is a truck. I mean, we're driving it now, the way it feels and the, and the sense of drivability, you know, you, you put in that gear, it just... Yeah, you gotta really put it in there. It goes in there, it's smooth, but the way it engages is not like a, uh, you know, Honda Civic. This is, this is a real truck. And this car is available for sale. The link is provided down below to see the full ad and asking price. And you'll notice that this, this model, the first generation, you have the round lights in the front. And I think one of the signature looks of the Range Rover are those squared lights, but that wasn't introduced into the second generation, right. which production began in 1994. And the first very early on years, it was vinyl interiors, plastic. It was meant to be hosed down. Make it easier. Well, again, that goes back to what I was saying, right? right. This, is, this is a car where you bought it with an intention, a purpose to work. Right. Later on, you saw the, you saw the, car, the carpet, you see the leather. Uh, this is a 74, so we're, you know, we're already seeing these features in this car. Mm -hmm. And then you get the power steering as well. Power steering was not an option back in the yeah, day. Thank God for us today. This one does have the power steering. And you mentioned this is a two-door Range Rover, and it wasn't until 81 that the four doors were available. Now there are some earlier models that before 81 that were four doors, but those weren't not, those weren't produced by the manufacturer. Those were done by specialty companies. Yeah. I sit so high, I feel like I just like hang out the window and my ball fall out. Did <laughs> <laughs> they turn a little slower? Feel that she has a lot of torque. Well, that's what it's all about, right? Because yeah. you want to haul or you want to climb. Yeah. And that's exactly what you need in a car like this. And this is the 3.5 liter V8 carbureted yeah. engine. Yes. Which is the early models of carbureted. We didn't see the fuel injection engine until I believe it was 1984. So this is the closest we'll get to off roading right now. To the grocery store and a Range Rover. <laughs> God. <laughs> it's perfect. We can't avoid it, huh? 185 pounds of torque. Let's see if we can do like a third gear pull. Okay, maybe, maybe we need a second gear. <laughs> well, start, I started too late. Let me yeah. go back to first. <laughs> Good old little tractor. There it is. Put it in third, try it now. There, gear, 
water here on the ramp. Rolling slow. Nice and slow. All right, let's do our famous walk around and talk a little bit more in particular on this car right here. Right, so this car just came into inventory as we mentioned. Again, link down below. And this is a beautiful, beautiful example. Fully restored, not involved by a Land Rover expert with over 40 years experience. It undertook a two year painstaking restoration wow. from the ground up, okay? Or the frame up. Everything was replaced. OEM, so original manufacturer equipment. If it wasn't replaced, it was serviced because there is some parts on this truck that are extremely difficult to find. You know, finished in its original color and everything was really meant to respect the original car. Interior, it's all redone, period correct. And the mechanicals of the car, so the V8 engine, the transmission, transfer case, and rear end were all overhauled. This, of course, is a full aluminum body. Which is awesome. I, it's, yeah. it's incredible, full aluminum body. And I love this feature right here. The C-pillar is vinyl. Yeah, that is awesome. It is, it is very cool. That's a nice touch. You know? And what's cool about this car is, this car was actually manufactured and assembled in the UK. And that's a good point, Ernest, because a lot of these cars that were sold for the Central and South American markets were actually assembled there. Right, and known as a CKD, the Complete Knockdown Kits. But this is a real UK fully English car that in fact was sold brand new to the British Embassy and serviced there wow. for over 20 years where it then found a private party and it remained there and then finally under restoration and now we'd have it here available today. And then you see all the, the liner in here is all brand new. Well, well you're gonna see a lot, a lot that's, of new components. That's, that's nice, it's nice and clean. And that engine has a, clean, has a clean. nice sound to it, right? It, it does. It's a good tone, good push. The restoration, which is fully documented, right. okay, it was such a clean body to start with that it made for the perfect candidate. And you can see that throughout the body because it hasn't had any prior damage to it before. This is a nice cool plaque right here. Mm -hmm. Chassis number is on there. And it tells you there that it was manufactured in the UK. Yep. Cool feature, cool distinct feature of this car. Look at this handle, how awesome is that? Same color as the body. And it's just, I like that a lot. I love this era of cars because the simplicity is what makes it beautiful. You have the handbrake, you got your four wheel drive functions, your shift lever, of course, steering wheel with a very basic gauge and a few other additional gauges here, but no center console, this wide open space. The purpose is for work, a real utility car. Man, what a SUV. I think it speaks volumes that the Range Rover is still being produced today after it began all the way back in 1970. I think it's a great signal for it. It really is. And, you know, collectors are really taking notice in this category, the Range Rover Classic. Prices are through the roof when you look at the fenders and things like that. And I wouldn't call it an alternative because it's really in a category of its own. But this here, again, is a wonderful example. Awesome history, UK made, nut and bolt restoration. Yeah. Early Suffolk C production, V8, I mean, it checks off every single box. So if you guys want to learn more about this particular car, again, yes. you can find the link down below in the description. That's we right. want to thank you for watching, but before we let you go, we want to remind you one last time, please hit that subscribe button. It would mean the world to us. Thank you so much. I'm Gaston Rosato. And I'm Renzo Rosato. We appreciate your support. Until next week, peace, peace out. out.